Have you seen this? Oh, this is not surprising, huh? So like most of you, uh, the wheel become tired, so yeah. I'm very tired. Even more tired now. More tired. So uh, obviously the rate of spinning is slowing down, uh, right? So you could have uh, Axle, uh, I mean, uh, top, axle friction, frictional top. What do you see? Uh? Do you notice something happened to the rope? It's twisted, uh? right? The rope is twisted. Okay, so there's a, there's a top. Okay, right, so now the question. Can anyone tell me how the wheel goes, it dips down. That means left hand rule. <laughs> uh, how come as it goes this way, right, it goes this, it, okay, obviously it slows down in the spin, okay, right, I think, I think, okay, I, I think I'm assuming that all, all, all of you know how come, right, I mean the wheel, if it is not spinning, you, you let go, you would drop, right? Okay, right, so in this case here obviously has to do with the spin. When you give it a spin, right, then it can, then you wrote it precise. Yeah, okay, so I think it is well known to everyone that that is because the top due to the weight, right, okay, like this allows the angular momentum to change. So that's why the, the wheel can precise instead of dropping. Okay, right, so, so that is well known now. Okay, so now, my question is, if you can see that, right, as it turns, okay, right, it actually slows down in its spin, and then it dips, okay. So, what gives rise to the dip? What gives rise to the dip? Okay, uh, so in fact, I can just tell you, uh, uh, I mean, I'll tell you part, part of the answers. Uh, if, uh, can I tell you part of the answers? Yeah, I cannot, cannot, cannot. I'll tell, I'll tell you part of the answer, I'll tell you the whole answer already. Okay, right, so, uh, so what gives rise to the tip? Uh, I hope I'm correct, uh. that's what I'll show you. Okay, uh, of course, this topic, right, involves angular momentum. Okay, when you give the wheel a spin, it has angular momentum, and then uh, the third, the precession and so on is due to the uh, top, due to the weight in that in the in that case, right? And uh, right, so you can we can write down Newton's second law that explains how this thing works, right? So here, uh, my little buddy here is, is uh, just reminding all of us dissipative forces, uh, okay? Right? So uh, so need to characterize all the dissipative forces, okay? Very easy. Characterize experimental characterization. You spin it, okay? Let it spin until it stops, okay? Right? Ah, uh, okay. Then you know it stops is because of of a top that is turning in the other, causing you know a, a acceleration, angular acceleration in the opposite direction. Okay. So you can experimentally characterize all, try to characterize all frictional torque, uh, okay? Right. So it can occur along the axis here. It can occur. In the in the rope here, right in this track here, okay, right. So practice problem is what I said just now. Practice on the the bicycle wheel, okay, right. Uh, what I'm showing here is just theory. Please go back, use your you know, carry out the experiment and see for yourself if this theory is correct. Okay, most likely it will be wrong now. Okay, right. So uh, try lah, try. Okay, but uh, it's reasonable lah. Okay, so when I started out deriving these equations, I was adopting the cylindrical polar coordinates, which is assuming that it's not going to do this. Okay, right, but uh, obviously it does this. So I have to expand my coordinate system to spherical polar one. Okay, not because I like complication, uh, so this is necessary. So you can see here, mathematical mo models, right, is 
not that you know you want it to be more complicated or less complicated. It all depends on the requirement, what is needed. Okay, so do what is needed. Don't shy away from what everyone this is going down the route of impossible mathematics, so I, I don't want to do. Okay, right? But you want to find out what, what is going on, right? Okay, right? So uh, these things can be learned. So it is not difficult. Anything that can be learned is not a problem. Huh? Remember this. Okay, right? So in spherical polar coordinates, I calculate the top. Okay, I can uh, and I take into account the frictional top, right? And so this is uh, the top due to gravity. This is the top due to friction along the axis here. Okay, and this is the top due to the twisting of the rope. So you observe just now the twisting of the rope. Okay, so here to test hypothesis, uh, if you don't have twisting, then it should go horizontal. Okay, we'll see later. Okay, right torsion plus frictional top. Okay, in the along, I mean in this direction, that is the frictional top that's associated with the rope. Because when you twist the rope, right, the surfaces of the rope will actually rub against each other. So there should be some sort so, so, uh, source of energy loss through that. Okay, so one, two, three. Plug into Newton's second law. Okay, on the right hand side, I work out the uh, rate of change of the angular momentum of the spinning wheel. So the spinning wheel is nice because uh, L is just I omega, okay, right? And then we can equate the different components. So what do the rate uh, formulas mean? This is the one that, you know, the, the, the top due to the weight gives you the precession. So you can see here that there's no dependence on the angle theta, okay, right? Uh, which means that Okay, this weight is not, not the one that causes it to dip this way. Obviously not. Okay, right? Now, uh, this is where you can see, right? Theta dot, okay? Uh, this is the theta, this is the theta. Okay, so this is the one that describes the dipping. Okay, if theta dot is positive, right? It means that it is doing this. The angle is increasing this way downward. Okay, right? Uh, all these things, I mean, when you go through, Right, you will realize that. Huh? Okay, so I'm, I'm not going to try to make you understand here. Okay, right, so you can see here, this is due to the torsion in the string and the frictional torsion, if there are any, in the string. Okay, so that is why I want you to, to see that video. Because that video, you can see obviously the string is twisted, it's being twisted. Okay, and that's the one that causes, you know, this theta to increase. Okay, right, so here, uh, the equations are not as simple as it seems, huh? because this t this omega has time dependence. Okay, so how phi changes depends on how omega changes. How omega changes is tied to theta, and theta is changing. So interesting. Yeah. Okay. So your, your angle angular quantities how they behave they are all tied to one another. Uh, this is what we meant by coupled equations. And they are differential equations, so these are coupled differential equations. Okay? Yeah? Right. So, uh, to solve them, I think more likely than not, you need to do numerical, you know, yeah? Right. So, you either you use Mathematica or you can use Python. Okay? Right. So, based on that example, okay? Right? Uh, I propose the model, uh, this is the proposed model. Uh, more likely than not, huh? uh, it's wrong, huh? but I hope it's correct. So you take it at your own risk. Okay. Yeah. This example, I mean the problem here is simple in the sense that look look at the 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 the, the bus, uh, I mean the turning wheel here. Okay. Uh, it doesn't go this way down. Huh? There's no theta. Okay. So it's just basically, right? You have a spinning wheel. Okay. Then you, you, you twist, you spin, but it has an angular momentum. So when it untwists, you will turn the L. Okay? You will turn the L. And then you will turn the L, right? Due to inertia, this thing will overshoot. Okay? And then after that, you will stop, and then it will come back. Okay? What adds to the complication is the frictional top. Because as it spins, it will slow down. Okay? So the dynamics will be interesting. Now. Okay, yep. Okay. So, uh, so cat A, don't complain, huh? 
Yeah, two problems that uh, you can solve quite completely, yeah? Okay, and then you have the interesting laden force and then the, the uh, uh, magnetic hues, right? Okay. And uh, yeah, the spiral waves. Five problems so far. Next, cat B. Wine glass, okay? Partially filled with liquid, okay? And whenever it says, it doesn't say water, uh, don't just uh, stay with water, uh, right? You have to put honey, uh, oil, uh, you know, yeah, okay, right? Partially filled liquid will resonate when exposed to the sound from a loudspeaker, okay? Investigate how the phenomenon depends on various parameters. So, cat B, usually I'll be kinder, uh, so I'll suggest some things to vary. Wine glasses, geometry, shapes, right? Okay, size. Uh, elastic property, okay? Liquid density, viscosity, and the amount of liquid, okay? Uh, how come liquid density, viscosity? Now, as a first try, you could ignore the fluid dynamics of the fluid inside, okay? Right, uh, when you go to the IYPT, then we will have to worry about the fluid dynamics again, never stokes equation, okay? Right, uh, I'll play some a video. <coughs> They'll show maybe suggest to you how you can have your experiment set up again. Okay? 